Okay, so this is a combination of the two strategies that we've done. So I'm going to let you um, take a look at it, knowing that you're going to have to employ both the factoring and the rationalizing. See if you can handle doing these ones. Just try your strategies. See if you can simplify out what's causing the problem. So at this point, hopefully you recognize where to factor, and this is going to be x plus 1, x minus 1, and that's going to remove the problem at x equals negative 1. Which is uh, the limit as x goes to negative 1 of x minus 1 over square root x squared plus 8 plus 3. And if I put in negative 1, that's going to be negative 2 divided by 6. So negative 1 third. Is that, can anybody confirm that? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, per perfect. Um, because we were cut short a bit today, I'm going to not do the second one. The pattern is identical, though. Um, get rid of the radical and then factor it. If you can follow this one, I'm sure you won't have any troubles with the other one finding its limit. Okay. So, um, last thing we're going to talk about today is the squeeze theorem. Um, it's another algebraic technique for finding a limit. Um, basically, sometimes there's methods which are very difficult, uh, or sorry, not a method, a function that's very difficult, and it's hard to find its limit. But if we can show this special relationship that there's two graphs that it's sandwiched between, then if I, know the gra if I know the limit for this graph and I know the limit for this graph, that sandwich or that squeezing will force the limit to go through that point as well. Okay? So um, here's an example. This function is an unknown one. It's just called u of x. You don't know what it is, but because you know that it goes between these two, it will have the same limit. So the limit as x approaches 0 of u of x is going to be equal to 1, the same as the other two. So that's the goal, is that we find simpler functions to evaluate, and we can squish them between. Okay. So I want to show you one uh, that uses the squeeze theorem to give you an idea of how this can be helpful. Um, and that's this one here. So it's a squiggly graph that bounces around. Let me show you how we would do this. Okay. First of all, what we want to think of is, okay. what do you know about the sine graph? It's wiggly. Can you tell me anything about what could bound the sine graph? What's the sine graph between? OK, you're halfway there. So if the sine graph is between negative 1 and 1, any number I give you, doesn't matter what number it is, it's going to be between negative 1 and 1, right? So if this is where I started, I actually I want an x there as well. How could I add an x to this inequality? Multiply everybody through by x. So that will be negative x is less than or equal to x sine of 1 over x. Um, is less than or equal to x. So here's the original graph. Here's the graph y equals x. And here's the graph 
y equals negative x. So there's a sandwich that goes between them. It's squishing them into um, the same point here. So if I wanted to know this limit, the limit as x goes to 0 of negative x must also sandwich the limit as x goes to 0 of x sine 1 over x. And that also sandwiches the limit as x goes to 0 of x. This middle one is very difficult to do directly. I wouldn't know what to tell you about doing it directly, but I can do these two side ones. This one I can substitute directly. So the, what's the only possible value it could be if it's less than or equal to 0 and greater than or equal to 0? Right, so by sandwiching them together, we've just figured out a way to show that this limit also equals to 0. Okay. So in the grand scheme of things, the sandwich, or sorry, the squeeze theorem um, very, very seldom is going to appear, but it's going to be useful in showing you some other ideas later on in our course. So I'm not going to do, um, I'm just going to show you a, um, one limit that's important for us that does appear often in calculus that you'll need to know the limit. You won't have to prove it, but I'll show you where it comes from. Okay. So if you didn't quite finish it, I'll put it back up in a minute. Um, just a second here. Okay, so here is a, uh, here's a sandwich picture right there. Um, the graph that we're looking to figure out, the limit, is sine x divided by x as we go towards 0. That graph, um, it's not defined because we divide by 0. Okay? You can see in these pictures that it's sandwiched on top by 1, and it's sandwiched underneath by the graph cos squared. Okay? So... That picture gives us some idea of how we get the value. What do you think the limit would be as sine x over x goes to 0? It would be a 1. Yeah, so there's at 0, there's the value at 1. So all I'm going to do is show you where those functions actually come from. Okay. It comes from the unit circle. So here's the sandwich, the area here of this triangle. Um, this is the formula for it, 1 half sine theta. Okay. The larger sector has the formula 1 half theta. And the smaller sector, this one down here, has the formula 1 half uh, theta cos squared theta. So no matter where I move, that triangle's area is somewhere in the middle of those two. It's sandwiched between those two items. Okay, So... These functions, if I was to take them and put them into uh, a squeeze theorem, then what I have is the small sector is cosine 1 half theta, cosine squared theta is less than or equal to 1 half, uh, sorry, theta sine theta, which is less than or equal to 1 half theta. So those are the three pieces. Of course, I can get rid of the halves, and I can get rid of the thetas, and I would end up with cos squared theta is less than or equal to, um, oops, sorry, I have an extra theta in there, sine theta divided by theta less than or equal to, uh, that would be a 1 then. So you're not expected to come up with this proof, but it is a sandwich theorem, one that is used to, just, uh, to figure out where it comes from. And the important part for you to know is that the limit as sine theta goes to 0 is 1. Okay. So that's one fact that you need to put away in your arsenal there of, of stuff that could come up as a trig limit. That's the most common trig one that's asked of all the AP and the regular calculus questions. Okay, so you're not ex responsible to produce it using a squeeze theorem or anything else, but you are responsible to know that information. So let's take a look at um, one last limit. And I apologize that we're rushing so much today. 
but uh, unfortunately it's turned out that way with uh, our fire drill. Okay. So um, this is the limit I was going to do with you. Um, here's one way we could change it, and it was similar to what we did in Math 12. Um, this 3x looks like it's new, but I can make a substitution. And I'd like to do this all in terms of thetas. So that means theta over 3 equals x. Sorry, um, now we're talking about theta. So this would be uh, the limit as theta goes to 0 of 3 times the sine theta over theta. And we know this one is a 1, so the limit would be 3 times 1, which is 3. So that's the only trick that's sometimes thrown in there about that limit, is sometimes it's not exactly the one that we've done. Sometimes it's sine 3x over x or 5x over x. Okay, there's definitely a, a, a pattern to it. It's whatever the multiple is turns out to be the limit. Okay. So a couple other ones that you will see time and time again um, down here. These are two other limits that you may uh, encounter. They're also found in that section of your textbook. So if something was to come up that you didn't uh, recognize, there are a couple in that section of the textbook that we could look up. But just to be clear, you're not responsible to prove them. You're just responsible for knowing them as well. Okay, so again, I do apologize that we're so rushed today, but we lost a half an hour on that fire drill. Um, and I'm going to leave you the rest of the time that we do have there to do a, um, your, your homework there, doing the algebraic proofs.